you're probably thinking, the gardening season is done. I have everything planted, transplanted, etc., and so forth, but I'm here to tell you, it is not the case. And do you actually still have seeds to sow? Even if you're in a cold climate like me, zone three, Canadian zone three, zone four USDA. This video is gonna be a little bit different than the rest of my seed sowing by month videos in the sense that I'm going to show you what seeds you can sow, but also gonna show you how to sow them in a fully planted garden where you're like, I have no more room. What do you mean more seeds? Because the goal here is to get your grocery bill down or build you a survival garden, whatever the case is, and have a continuous food supply, even in cold climates. So let's start off with seed sowing. I'm gonna say this straight up because I say it in every seed starting video. If you don't like it, don't sow it because you're not gonna eat it. So only reserve the space in the garden for the stuff you know you're going to eat. So the first one is actually arugula and spinach. These are not only slightly frost resistant, in the case of spinach, very frost resistant, but sowing these now will allow you a harvest well into September in the event that you don't cover, but well into November, December in the event that you use low tunnels or high tunnels, whatever the case is. A little story here on spinach. I planted spinach in my garden socks last fall. I didn't put a low tunnel over them because I got absolutely hit with snow very early on. And I just assumed that the spinach was dead. Turns out when I went in the spring to re-sow my garden socks, the spinach was very much alive still and growing under about three feet of snow. So spinach, absolutely wonderful plant to grow in our colder climate. The next two are actually root vegetables, beets and carrots. These have a relatively slow turnaround time and they are frost tolerant, meaning you can eat the greens well into October or past your last frost date, but the harvesting of the root can take place until the ground is frozen. And for some of us, that can be in December, depending on the volume of snow cover. And just a hint here, you want snow cover because snow cover is an insulator. So in the event that you're doing carrots or beets or some sort of root vegetable, the use of mulch right now and capturing that really high heat is ideal. Along with when you do get your first snowfall, actually piling the snow on top of the area will help keep that plant happy and healthy and basically be a form of storage if you don't have a cold room well into the winter months. The next three are corn salad, kale, and collard greens. Another three that are slightly frost resistant and will allow you to harvest well into October. I'm not gonna say it's allow you to harvest farther than that unless you have a low tunnel of some sort. Lettuce, mustards, and radicchio are all slightly frost tolerant as well. Meaning if you were to seed start these now, you'd be harvesting well into the fall. Some of my absolute favorite fall crops, pak choy, bok choy, any of those ones, those Asian greens, A++ there, they're incredibly frost tolerant and they actually do best germinating in cooler soils. So you could plant these now in July. They may or may not bolt depending on where you are, but you could actually reserve these for planting in August or in some cases, September even, just because the turnaround time on them is incredibly fast and they will germinate in those cooler soils without the warmth. Radish and turnips, another cold climate crop that tends to bolt more than that of carrots and beets and therefore could be planted now in July along with August or September, depending on what your last frost date is. Now where I am, my last frost date is in September. So September is way too late for turnips and radishes to be planted, but I can be planting radishes into July. And radishes and turnips are a unique taste, but if you, if you pickle them or you store them right, they can last a really long time. So if you're doing this to lower the grocery bill, find recipes you like that involve radishes. And just a hint here, Shaving these nice and thin will really reduce the spice of them. And I'm sure many subscribers have ideas down below. So please drop the ideas for turnips and radishes below. Last is Swiss char. Swiss char is, to, in my opinion, such a decorative plant, both to eat along with to have in your garden because you can get so many different stem colors. So Swiss char, again, slightly frost resistant and can be covered. Okay, 
So now you're probably wondering, that's great. <laughs> My garden's fully planted. What the heck am I gonna do with these plants? Where am I gonna put them? How am I gonna be able to tell them from the weeds that may pop up? I'm here to give you those hints. So this garden here behind me gets an incredible amount of sun, regardless of the time of year, which makes it a perfect candidate for winter and fall cropping, or AKA midsummer sowing. Now, the way to be able to plant your seeds directly in this space without risking the potential of you weeding that out comes down to a few simple steps. Now, step one would be to avoid chaos planting, meaning just the sprinkling of seeds all over the garden. There's a reason why we choose to sow seeds in a row, and it actually comes down to our ability to determine if it's a plant or a weed when it's just in those initial cotyledon or first true leaf stages. Now, this is incredibly important because that beginning stage of the seedling is when it's most susceptible to competition or allelopathic properties of surrounding plants. So whenever possible, sow in a line and sow between your existing crop. A uniform line is a great signifier that it is not a weed, it is a part of your plant community. Now, if you're utilizing mulch, you could actually just remove the mulch from that space and this will ultimately give you a very obvious space where you have a crop rather than a weed, but keep in mind, it's also a room for weeds so, so regardless if you root, remove the mulch for the time period of germination, you could still end up with some weed competition in there. So that's why I advocate for if you're gonna direct sow, actually do it in a line, a clump, some sort of design, you can tell what it is, a smiley face, whatever the case is. Now, if you're not super confident in your ability to tell apart different plants, whether they're weeds or whether they're seedlings, then I would actually encourage you to just do the classic transplant style. So this simply means starting your seeds in seed cells. Now, what I will say here is that if you're going to go this route, I would highly encourage you to actually start them indoors. The reason for this is because a number of the crops I listed are considered delicacies to birds, meaning sparrows and other harmless birds like that, anything that's not a bird of prey, will tend to feast on these if you just leave them out in the open. If you don't have a bird problem, then you should be fine. The other thing to consider is if you start these seedlings usually inside of containers in direct sun, they tend to get sunburnt, have slightly stunted growth, so definitely something to consider there. And if you start them in the shade, they tend to get a little bit leggy, combined with just other elemental factors such as high heats, cold nights, wind, because apparently Saskatchewan's incredibly windy now, that sort of thing. I would encourage you to start these indoors. You have the setup if you started seeds to begin with, and therefore they, it's a great solution to this. The other thing is, is if you have a local garden center that's incredibly in tune with your zone, they're going to have seedlings. I've been to a few in my area, they have seedlings. They most definitely have seedlings meant for fall planting at the ready. Superstore is one, um, oddly enough, <laughs> I was kind of shocked by I went there trying to get some sale perennials turns out that they had colored greens and Asian veg and they had cauliflower broccoli I was shocked by it but they were all seedling stage just a couple true leaves all of these are great choices that will allow you to either pot them up keep them indoors maybe put them in a greenhouse whatever the case is or intercrop them inside of your plants I hope this got helped you guys out in determining what you need to do to be able to get the fall and winter crops, keep that grocery bill down, or just simply get good at survival gardening so you have a continual food supply. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.